Thanks for joining us on another episode of Make Sense on RBN TV. We are very delighted that you are with us. And on today's episode, we talk to a budding entrepreneur who has started, managed, and successfully owned a number of budding businesses in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and Grand Bahama by extension. We're very excited to have on the show Miss Andre Saunders, who is going to tell us her story and how you can have or how you can use successfully the tips of surviving COVID-19 and increasing your cash flow. Miss Saunders, welcome to the show. Hi, Adrian. How are you? All of the viewers. I'm excited to be here. Good, good, good. So we want to jump right in it. Uh, quick question. Tell us about your business and how did it get started? What, what, what prompted the idea to uh, want to get in business? Well, wow. You know, I started in 2014. It was so funny because I used to always go downtown. I loved underwear. And I used to go to this particular shop and, you know, splurge my little income on underwear and this particular time i went to the store it just shifted it wasn't about underwear anymore it was about clothing and i was like don't you know people need underwear like why would you come out of the underwear business and at that moment it rang the bell i was like you know what forget waiting on people to provide underwear for me i'm going to find underwear and I'm going to get in this business and I'm going to always supply it. And that's, that was the ultimate vision. And then I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this alone. I prayed about it for three months and I brought my cousin along. And so I had a partner in the beginning and that was the flow that I wanted to go because of the capital that I wanted to start with. It was very small. So that was the way I went. Great. Now you, you hit at a couple of business fundamentals that we want to, we'd be interested in talking a little bit more about, but, and, and, and the first question would be for many budding entrepreneurs taking an idea into reality. One of the first assessments that you have to make is how do I assess the level of demand for the product that I'm potentially about to sell? Like, what was that process like for you? I mean, you have a product that you think can work. How did you go from, uh, translating in that into this can move product and it can be ultimately profitable. Well, I looked at the fact that I wasn't the only person shopping for underwear at this time at the particular store. And so every time I would go in, I would see, you know, they had a lot of customers that were shopping for underwear and my friends were some of those customers. And so when I realized that they began to provide more of clothing, I knew that there was a market for underwear. So I decided to tap into that market. And initially, when I finally found a supplier, um, I was able, because I had a little background in business in high school, I actually you know, studied business in high school. I understood you know, margins, markups, and all of that business jargon. So um, I did all of my research and I, you know, study the market and everything. And I knew that it would work. I did, basically, I did all of my research and I knew that this business would work. Great. Now, you did mention uh, you started off with a nominal, nominal amount of capital. And I know for a lot of businesses or prospective businesses, the notion of getting from point A to point B requires money. How did you determine how much money you needed and how you were going to source it? I mean, talk about your capital planning priorities at that time. Well, firstly, once I found once I founded the supplier, then I knew how much the product cost. And after that, I did research on the shipping companies and how much it would cost to bring in this particular product. And then I, you know, assessed, okay, how much would it cost for me to stay in business if I, if I got started? So um, that was my main thing. But, you know, I think the main thing was it wasn't supposed, it was a hustle. 
it was a hustle. I wanted to flip money so that I can have money to be able to take care of myself. But I went in with a business mindset, but a hustling girl. So there was a struggle there. It was a struggle there. So uh, talk to us just a bit about passion versus fundamentals. I mean, it, it's often a marriage that has to happen. Uh, one, you know, determining how to make sure that you're planning properly and two, ensuring that your passion is being fulfilled. Was that a delicate balance for you? And does that keep you going in business now? Yes, that's why I stay because business isn't always sweet. You know, you have those days, you have those moments and you know, what I recognize about business, not just being in the clothing retail, but um, in every aspect of businesses that I tapped into, I realized that you have those moments where you're gonna have slow periods. It has to be either a demand product. If it's seasonal, then you know you're only gonna supply in season. And one thing about the clothing retail that I was providing, the mentality of the market was that it was a seasonal product. And I was like, no, I want to take it from just being this particular seasonal product and being a every day I need this product. And so that was one of the key things, trying to make sure that it's not a seasonal, because a lot of people like myself, you know, we, we go into business and sometimes we, we tap into markets that are very seasonal and that's why we don't survive long. So the assessment is, can this business survive day to day? Will people shop for this day to day? And so I was able to bring in products that complemented day to day survival. And sometimes I had bad months as in I wasn't supplying and not because the there wasn't a demand it was because um i i knew that it took more it took more to create this 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 business and the the monies that i was making i i used it to survive really yeah interesting information there and uh, one one thing i gleaned on was strategically using a good product mix uh, one that can get you through the, the seasonality of some of the products that you do uh, provide. We're in a very, 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 very unique season, and it's a COVID-19 season. How how do you plan for and manage through what can be very, very low numbers of demand, uh, lockdown, so uncertainty with getting your product out, and even supply disruptions of having shipping companies bringing your product? How, how have you managed through that? And, and what insight can you share with us if, if that's possible? Well, number one was that, was it a good time to sell a product? That was, that was the number one thing because this is a pandemic, you know, everyone is shutting down. Can I, can I supply this product? Can I, can I be able to sell? At this time and that was one of the things I, and i was like hey i've already i've already made my brand a day-to-day -day brand something that people need and locally i can supply because this is a product that people would go away to shop for so i said you know what it's time to put myself back out there so i say hey we're back and i was able to put myself in the front of my my market in front of my audience and they responded but what i did was very strategic of course you have to be strategic when you're in business right so i made it i i, I reached them on a level where they were in where i live of course where we live you know whatsapp i mean yeah. sponsored by whatsapp so um but WhatsApp was an app is an app that we use. And so what I did was I created a digital a digital market where I can receive orders through WhatsApp. And so it was almost like my clients were ordering off of a website, but they really were wasn't because I had a system just by one particular um post and it was a how to order. And so it it gave them the exact details of how to order and it worked. It worked in the dynamics of I was making money every single day. Like for a week straight, I was making over, you know, a certain amount. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, 
listen, you know, if, if and, and, and it takes consistency with business. And once there is, once you know that you have a good product, just stay consistent because the money is there. The money is there to make people, people need what you have. And you would just have to be confident with that. That is my thing. So you, you brought up two well, excellent points as well. I mean, the, the migration to a nut, well, to tech, well, to a platform that's tech based. And you touched a bit on marketing. It, like, can, can you like, for the benefit of our audience and myself as well, let us know, I mean, how has technology changed the business and how has it changed marketing strategies as well? Well, number one, it's less, it's less costly <laughs> because you can, you can, you can learn from your device. That's mm -hmm. number one, because knowledge is key. At, at we we're here because we're we're trying to gain knowledge right we're trying to gain knowledge on our finances so knowledge is key and the fact that you have a device knowledge is free <laughs> well not always free but we know where to get knowledge free and so the number one thing for me was that i was able to connect with everyone that i needed to connect with through technology that's number one connection and that's what we all you know work with connection and so i was still able to connect with my audience i was still able to connect with my market being able to connect with them i was able to create something that that, that they would respond to because that is how i market what you're creating something that people are ready to respond to right and so in that um Marketing um, technology actually helped me to spend less on marketing because I am the marketing strategist, of course. <laughs> that is yes, another business. <laughs> yes, I'm an entrepreneur. So, yes, that's another business for me. So, I know how to tap into market. And, um, but technology paves the way of you not spending lucrative amount until you do or have developed a brand where you say, hey, I got this. I got this in my budget and I'm willing to invest because marketing is like a real big part of your business. And if you're not marketing savvy, or if you don't have that, I mean, besides, you know, coming to me, <laughs> the marketing strategist, you definitely will need someone to help you along that with that part. Yeah, no, that's uh that's that's great. I mean, let's let's transition a bit into advice that you may if you that you would freely offer uh, to our viewing audience more so surrounding the fact that COVID-19 has created uh, waves of uncertainty uh, and with uncertainty comes opportunity, as we all know. I mean, in two or three lines, what, what, what are those, where are those opportunities and how do you uh, advise our guests to manage through, successfully manage through that is, COVID-19 and the waves of uncertainty? Small business start i wouldn't even say up <laughs> start your small business start your hustle i had this i literally created this um this program for my models because i do um manage uh, models i'm an agent for models at blue mag agency and i i taught this this small little course i, I had i carried through zoom meetings with this it's called Bloom Girl Hustle. And this really taught young upcoming women, probably between the ages of 18 to 25, who don't have no background in business, but they know what they want. They, they know that they want to make some money. They know that they need to bring some source of income into their household. And so it was strictly about understanding that just because you are selling something and making money doesn't mean that it's a small business. And I think a lot of times we think that because we have something that actually is making money, we call it, we consider it a business. Mind you, it is business. But what it is, is once you're flipping money to make, once you're flipping something to make money, it's a hustle. When you start operating at a particular level, Whereas you're putting in systems, you're putting in, you know, particular plans, you're, you have these, all of these particular things in place, you know, to run your business successfully, then you manage to become a small business. And once you're cons being consistent with that and managing that, then you turn that into a multi-million dollar mogul because then you receive investors or 
whatever type of business that you want to build but you start off as a hustle because if once if, it, if it's not legal it's a hustle <laughs> right you know you're, you're legal right so no problems I'm, there i'm legal <laughs> i'm legal no, so you, you raised another interesting point again, uh, the point of infrastructure, infrastructure on systems, technology, assets, uh, equipment. I mean, when do you know as an entrepreneur to take that next step and how do you attract and attract investors? I know, go back to what we talked about in the beginning, capital can be very hard to source and that's really the engine that kind of greases the, the, the business throughout its cycle. How do, you, how do you know how to take that step? Well, listen, you have to listen out for opportunities. When you are a, a or you're thinking about being a business owner, you have to listen out for opportunities. The, 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 our government um, has, and many, even around the world, there are so many little things or information that's out there where you can get different um, grants and funds, you know, depending on the description of, or depiction or ethnicity of who you are, you know, there are funds out there, some sort of capital, but you have to look out for opportunities. You have to do your research. Hey, is, is there any opportunity for me to gain funding? And what I did was, um, I, you know, looked out for opportunities. And one of those opportunities happened to be um, small business development. Um, and I was a part of that program and I was actually a recipient um, of that, 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 that grant. And I was truly excited to help me, you know, to continue to push my business. I actually took my business to, I was in um, Houston. I went to Houston with my, my products and my brand. And yeah, I, the, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you. The excitement. <laughs> the, the excitement, the excitement, the fact that persons here, you know, in, in our community, they said, anyone gonna buy that over there? They can get that right there. But when I carried my products to Houston, those persons, those those customers, those the, the people that that supported, they were excited about myself. And I was shocked because I was listening to the noise in the market, you know, but at the same time, I still had that, that they like, they gonna buy it, you know, cause I, I, I bring something different, you know? And yes, customer service is really important. And, but customer service plays on your character, your integrity, you know, who you are, what you, what you, what you bring into people's lives, you know? So, um, I was able to bring my, my, my brand into Houston. I also um, carried it into Miami. And so I realized, okay, not only do I have a local market, but I have an international market because I was not afraid to travel and I was not afraid to try anything that would would um, bring success in my business of course within my character and my integrity of course but otherwise not I was I was ready I was ready to take my business to the next level there was some setbacks I had setbacks um, with website development for a very long time um, but I have found ways you know to operate um, just like as though I have one so there, I, I definitely tapped into the international market and that was through the help of that small business grant. I am telling you, there are opportunities out there, you just gotta look. Yeah, no, it, it definitely does sound so, and it sounds as if you have really, really taken advantage of those opportunities and you're doing very well. Now, that energy is obviously going to, uh, uh, I guess, I will hopefully get into the, 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 the interest of our audience, where can we find you? I mean, how can, how can folks reach out to you if they want to continue the conversation or ask more about your business, your story, and how you continue to do what you do? Well, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, so by heart, if you're looking for, if you are looking for just my, business my, my 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 clothing retail business you're not just going to find that you're going to find that i have tapped into you know advanced tutoring you know for kids a learning program you you would find that i have tapped into um um uh, being a uh, creating a, uh, my own digital products you know so if you're looking for me just in, at, at my clothing retail you won't find me there i'm a full-time entrepreneur so you can find me if you um, take a look on Instagram, I'm there on Instagram, 
And I love Instagram because I'm a creative. I'm a creative entrepreneur as well as a serial entrepreneur. So you can find me on Instagram. I love images. And I think that, that the story of a business is what keeps it flowing. So you can find me on Instagram. My contact information is 1242. Yes, I'm giving my number. <laughs> I'm doing my number one, two, four, two, four, four, two, eight, five, zero, two. And as well, you can email me. My email will be in the description below, or you can just message RBN TV Studios. I'm right here holding for it. So, thank you. Well, Chandra, we really, really appreciate you taking the time out of it. Uh, with us to provide some insight on being an entrepreneur and cash flow through COVID. We wish you every continued success and thanks so much for being with us here on Make Sense. And to our audience that joins us every week, like, click, subscribe. Thanks for joining us once again on this episode. And until next time. We're watching.